Good morning. The title of my sermon is Presence Before God's People. And I preached this on Sunday, October the 27th, 2019 at Prospect Trinity and Asbury United Methodist Churches in Harrington, Delaware. My name is the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Jameson. United Methodists like to talk about five words in our membership vows. Uh, we promise to support the United Methodist Church by our prayers, by our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And I feel led to talk about that word presence. You know, this is not complicated. It simply means uh, presence before God and presence before God's people. Today I'd like to talk about presence before God's people. And another word for this is church attendance. Now it's good for us to ask why, and once in a while we ask ourselves why we do certain things. And it's good to, uh, to ask the question, well, why do we go to church anyway? You know, I sent out an, an informal email poll this week to, the, to all three congregations, Prospect, Trinity, and Asbury. And I asked them, um, why should someone attend your church on Sunday? And I told them that I would send that I would share a um, David Letterman style top 10 list as a result of the, the answers that they gave me. So I put this together and I had a lot of fun with it. And on Sunday I made this presentation. Let's go over it right now. Number 10, easy parking. <laughs> uh, number nine, <clears throat> somebody actually said that. Number nine, uh, beautiful music, and that's a really great reason, because we have some wonderful music in our churches. Uh, number eight, Bible-based sermons. That was very complimentary. Uh, number seven, we have a fun minister. Oh, praise the Lord, that was awesome. Uh, number six, casual dress code, and that's true. In all three churches, uh, we're really excited about people when they just come in and uh, it is a casual atmosphere, and so that's a good thing. Number five, encouraging and supportive for children. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely true. We have a lot of uh, a love and acceptance in our churches for all the children. Number four, God wants you to attend. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's true, but that's a little bit heavy. Number three, it's where you can learn about God and the Bible. That is absolutely true. Number two, it's a place to get involved in community activities like trunk or treat or cantata or clothes closet or monthly meals or um, uh, the backpack ministry or um, world vision. Oh my gosh, there's so many things that uh, our people are involved in. And this is really great because one of the fundamental purposes of our church is to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And this is uh, why we come to church, so that we can make a difference, a, a really solid difference in this world in the name of Jesus. Okay, so uh, here's the one I picked for number one. The top reason I think that we attend church on Sunday is that there are people who care who are truly your family waiting there to welcome you. I want to thank everyone who uh, helped me out with this top 10 list. So uh, a lot of people ask, well, you know, if, I, if you want me to go to church, what's in it for me? And uh, we need to realize that people are often motivated by self-interest. And that's okay because it's part of human nature. And God made us this way. So we need to, um, to think about that. When we invite someone to church, we can uh, talk to them a little bit about what the benefit for them will be. We know that God rewards uh, faithfulness. And when we go to worship Him, God is going to reward us. So um, a little bit of a thought experiment here. Like uh, compare it to a bank. Let's say every time you went to a bank, they gave you $100 for free. Wow, you'd go there every day. Um, and so would everybody else. As a matter of fact, there would be long lines getting into the bank because everybody would say, wow, they're giving away free money. And a line would form. It would wrap around the building. Well, you know what? God is giving away much, much better things than money. And when we go to church and enter into His presence, oh my goodness, we're getting blessed. God is giving His presence, and it's His presence. His presence is better than His blessing. His 
blessings are really just a, a side effect of His presence. Along with His presence, God gives us His blessings, His wisdom, His power, His favor, His guidance, His healing touch, His encouragement, His transforming love, His mission, His viewpoint, His kingdom, His exceeding excellence, His authority, His compassion, His problem-solving insights, His grit and ability to endure hardship, His humor, His astounding loveliness, His peace, His forgiveness, and his commission, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we might ask the question, well, where in the Bible does it promise that if I go to church, I will encounter the presence of God? Oh, it's there. It's in Matthew 18, 20. That's where Jesus said, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them, end quote. You know, this is an amazing truth that when we are present with each other, we are also present with God. Let me tell you uh, my story about a guy named Walter. Um, I met Walter in Elk Neck, Maryland. He, uh, he, was a, he attended the church at uh, Wesley United Methodist Church in Elk Neck, Maryland. It's like halfway between Northeast and Elkton. And uh, I was the pastor there from 1993 to 1999. I had a great experience there. Loved those people, loved that church. It was just a lot of fun. Walter was a quiet guy. <clears throat> he attended our men's group and uh, he attended church and he was always in the background. Uh, he just took everything in. He didn't say much. He never gave his testimony. Uh, but he went with us when we went places. Uh, the, the men at that church just loved going to Promise Keepers. That was really popular back then. And uh, Walter would attend Sunday school and he would come to our Bible studies. One day um, I had a chance to uh, visit Walter in his home and I asked him what he thought about our group and his answer surprised me. He said that our message was easy to understand and he was just waiting to see if the men themselves who were in that group were for real. <laughs> I did not expect him to answer that way. Basically, Walter was asking, did the message that these men were always talking about and the Bible verses they professed, did it make it all the way to their hearts and it did, it, did it make their characters better? In other words, were they for real? Now, he was asking if the gospel was just baloney or did it change the lives of the men and make them more like Jesus? I was not expecting him to say that. That was a very honest and insightful answer. And a couple of years later, I went back and visited with Walter, and I asked him what he thought about the men this time. And that time, Walter quietly uh, assured me that he was convinced that God was present in our group and that he had trusted Christ personally as well and accepted him as Savior and Lord. Now, this didn't happen immediately. It took a long time for Walter to make a decision. But eventually, belonging became believing for Walter. I will never forget these conversations that I had with Walter because it shifted my point of view about how the church works. You know, nowadays, I'm not so worried about how effectively we are explaining the gospel. I'm much more concerned about if we are living it, and if Christ is evident in our lives. A good habit is a great thing to have, and one thing we want to encourage uh, disciples to do is to um, get into the habit of attending church regularly. You know, modern research has proven that we can choose to create good habits, and the key to our success is always to start small. Now, if you want the habit of attending church more often, then just start small. Figure out how often you're going right now, and then just increase that by a little bit. You know, in Luke 16.10, Jesus said, Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. End quote. So, when we give little things to Jesus, that is significant. Jesus takes our little things and makes a big difference. 
It's in the small things that we do for people we love that make a difference. Oh, this is absolutely true. You know, um, this is true for husbands and wives. It's true for friendships. Um, think of something small that you can do to show your appreciation or show, uh, show um, your support or just a, a, an act of kindness uh, for um, a person that you want to get to be closer with. And guys, this is how it works. You know, um, if, uh, if you want to be closer to your wife, you want to tell her you love her, you, you tell her you love her <laughs> every day if you can. Um, but you know, once in a while, do something like sneak upstairs and make the bed and just come back downstairs and like she doesn't know. Um, or um, have a glass of tea for her in the refrigerator that if you know that she likes tea. You know, little things. Little things make the difference and send the clear message about uh, the relationship and how that's important to you. And if you will do this, you'll be blessed. You know, uh, your marriage will be improved. Your friendship with your children will be improved. Your friends, you know, at church and, and at work will, will be improved. It's the little things that make the difference. So it is in the small things that God moves us closer to His heart. You know, this is true in the, in the realm of human relationships. It's also true with our relationship with God. In Zechariah 4.10, the Bible says, Does anyone dare despise this day of small beginnings? They'll change their tune when they see Zerubbabel setting the last stone in place. Okay, that might sound a little obscure, but it's right on target when it comes to small things. You know, God has a way of taking the little things and making a big difference. God's power is revealed in the leverage of habits. And if you want to grow in your discipleship, part of that is showing up, just showing up, going more often. And the way you do that is making the decision to go a little bit more often. That's why in Hebrews 10.25, the Bible says, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Okay, what's this day that the Bible's talking about? Well, it's the day that Jesus returns to earth. Let me share with you uh, a personal insight that, uh, that has come to me over years of uh, training in a hospital setting. You know, uh, I've been to <laughs> hundreds of hours of lectures and training in, in hospitals, especially for chaplaincy. Uh, I've been in so many hospitals, and I've actually led chaplaincy programs and, and taught pastors and lay people uh, how to visit. And uh, this is one of the best things I ever learned. Okay, I really set you up here. <laughs> but it's pretty simple. When you are visiting somebody, in the name of Jesus, it's okay to ask questions. Just don't ask too many questions. That's it. Th that's my profound insight. <laughs> okay, so in other words, just be present. Now, I know that sounds odd, but it is profoundly true. Instead of putting your energy into coming up with questions, put your mental effort into listening. You know, people will tell you a lot more about themselves if you don't ask questions. Let me say that again people will tell you a lot more about themselves if you don't ask questions. If you simply listen and you actually care about who they are and what they're going through, then you will become an expert on visiting. Now, when you visit someone in the name of Jesus, you know, you're going to uh, see them at church or you see them in a nursing home or in a hospital or in the parking lot or in their home, perhaps they're a shut-in. You know, if you are patient, and you pay attention, they will tell you all kinds of amazing things and you will discover um, things you have in common, you know, bridge, interests that bridge the gap between you and this other person and you are off to the races. You know, this technique works every single time for me and it's one of the best things that I have ever learned and I just wanted to share this with you so that, you know, when you want to be uh, present before someone else, especially in the name of Jesus, this is how. Be patient, pay attention. God will bless you for that. God will open door after door, and God will sweeten your relationships. These things don't happen overnight. You have to give them time, but God is the one who opens doors, 
and God is the one who pours out a blessing. Let us pray. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit, for the way you bless us every Sunday in church. You inspire women and men to study and teach the Bible. You create friendships that encourage us. You fill our hearts with songs of wonder, love, and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to this sermon.